was like, dang, I done been through three niggas, like three, four niggas within the three years that you done been with this girl. And it made me really just kind of reflect on that, on how the differences is with our communities. So first, I'm just going to say the stereotypes. say so tv episodes uh today i'm talking about lesbians versus gays or i ain't even gonna necessarily call it lesbians versus gays i'm gonna title it that though but what had encouraged me to make this video y'all is so i have an auntie that's the same age as me and um, we graduated together, everything. Like, we grew up thick as thieves. Like, brother and sister, like, Phil and Will type of energy. You know what I'm saying? Even though, like, she's my aunt, technically, because she's my little... She's my mom's little sister. And my mom, my grandpa had her at the same time as my mom had me. Like, uh, she's, like, four or five months older than me. Anyway... She has a girlfriend. She is bisexual. She's also bisexual. But she is in a gay relationship like myself. However, me and her was talking the other day. <laughs> and we was like comparing our lifestyles. We were just like, hold up, motherfucker. Like, because I'm just like, basically, y'all, she's been with the same girl. Like, she, her first girlfriend is the same girl that she's been with since 2020. So her and this girl got together. They've been together three years now. They got a kid together. They had their kid after their first year. His, her girlfriend had the kid. Even though her girlfriend's the stud, she's the femme in the relationship. But her girlfriend's the stud, and she's the one that ended up having a kid for both of them. Long story short, uh... Shit, like, me and her was talking, and I was just like, damn, bitch, like, how the fuck you got the whole shebang already? You got the the, the girl, you, the, you got the spouse, the kid, y'all already been, you know, financially comfortable and everything anyway, so it's just like, you know, I got basically all that other shit checked off, but it's just like, basically what I'm saying is that, like, yeah, okay. I got a boyfriend. I got the whole shebang as well, as far as I'm concerned as well. But the thing is, the difference is, is that it took me forever to get here, y'all. Like, I have been trying to be with someone seriously, like, without cheating or doing any fuckboy shit since I was 25. I am 30 now. We're the same age, too, you know what I'm saying? But she's, it's just the fact that, like, all before this, she dated dudes. Now, she, this is her first girlfriend. And, like, it didn't work with the dudes, but now all of a sudden, like, she is working for her with this girl. And I'm so proud of her. I'm so fucking proud of her. Like, it's dope as fuck. Like, I applaud her all the time. And when they go through shit, I'm the first one that they hit up. Even her girlfriend hits me up. Like, her girlfriend really fuck with me tough. Like, if me and my dude get into it, me and, like, her girlfriend will comfort me before my auntie would. You know what I'm saying? Because her girlfriend I can relate to more. Because she's a stud, so she's masculine. I'm masculine. My, You know what I'm saying? So y'all get where I'm going with that. But anyway, basically, like, we were just talking, and it was just like, basically, I wanted to make this video because I realized that even though we're all up under the same umbrella, the LGBT umbrella, we all live separate lives like a motherfucker. Like, we live so totally different lives. And I just, like, really has just started to realize that because um, I was talking to Babe, and I was, you know, we was having one of these conversations about you know the adversity against the gay community we were actually watching videos on the adversities against the gay community and shit like that etc and he was just like shit i don't i ain't never felt as discriminated against because like now see 
he has a different experience even than me because even though he is bisexual openly, he's not DL. However, he was with a girl that he was married to for years before me, okay? I'm technically like his first real relationship with a man he's had. Like I said, he's hooked up with other dudes, but he ain't never been with another dude like that. So, of course, to him, he may not relate to a certain shit. Now, I also, I can relate to things that gay guys go through, but I also, there's things that we were talking about, and we were just like, yeah, nah, I ain't never experienced that, or I ain't never felt like that. Um, I'm trying to give an example. He was basically like, females still try to fuck with him, even though, they know about his sexuality. Of course, some females don't. I think all by bis openly bisexual men experience that. We know that there are females out there that are for our picking. There are also some that aren't. We were watching a video on this gay man talking about how the gay community is so tough and, and blase, blase. As we figured out after watching this video that even gay men and bisexual men have two totally different experiences. His... The dude that we were watching, the gay man, was saying how all these things have been against him because of his sexuality. Well, as a bisexual man, we may not relate to a lot of that because, especially if you are still attractive, conventionally attractive, you're masculine. Oh, so what we were really saying was that if you fit into the status quo in the gay community, then you'll be an exception from all of the fuck shit. Basically, a lot of the guys that go through fuck shit are ugly um, or not conventionally attractive. Um, they're not masculine. So it's like if you're not masculine, if you're not conventionally attractive and blase, blase, then yeah, you may get faced with a lot of discrimination. However... A lot of people may not want to hear it. It may sound like a biggie and it's a, it sounds a little fucked up, but I'm not being shady at all. I'm just being real with y'all and giving y'all my experience. As a bisexual man, if you actually check off financially stable, financially successful, um, handsome, nice body, um, you know what I'm saying? Like you got... You pretty much are still conventionally attractive and you're masculine and etc. Well, that actually flips a lot of that adversary upside down. And then you don't actually experience it as much or at all in certain ways that the gay community will. I'm not saying that that's right or whatever. I'm just telling y'all what the experience is. Um, just for all my bisexual men or DL men that are hesitant about coming out, just so that y'all know, we don't experience the exact same adversities and things that the gay community experience, just to let that know. Just to let that be known, all right? Now, back to the conversation with my aunt about how, I was just like, damn, bitch, like, you already got the whole shebang. This is your first go. I'm proud of you, you know what I'm saying? Just stick it in there, you know, like, because she was, you know, venting to me about some shit that they had going on or whatever. And she was like, I was like, dang, I done been through three niggas, like three, four niggas within the three years that you done been with this girl. And it made me really just kind of reflect on that, on how the differences is with our communities. So first, I'm just going to say the stereotypes. Yes, lesbian women, from what I've heard, they have a higher domestic violence rate, which is kind of assumptional because that's two women with periods and they may clash a lot. However, I believe that it's a pretty equi equivalent. I feel like it's pretty equal on both sides because I've had experiences. She's also had experiences. Her and her girl done fought, even while her girl was pregnant. They like her girl was hitting on her while she was pregnant. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I think that that's kind of even across the board. We may, we may just not know because we're in the different relationship. However, the whole 
falling in love quick and moving in quick with each other. You know, the gay stereotypes. That's all pretty much around the board. So I'm just like, well, what's the big difference? And she was just like, well, shit, first of all, all y'all be worried about is sex. <laughs> she was like, me and this girl ain't had sex and probably like, there's times where we don't have sex for like a three weeks to a month or two, almost. Like, she said, y'all focus on sex so much and put a highlight on sex. So if y'all stop having sex, like, which is natural in any relationship for the most part, you're going to have that hot and steamy stage in the beginning that's full of passion and hot, steamy sex. That's apparent. Mature people should know that. But as you go through a relationship, that shit might slow down a little bit. And for the most part, I don't really see gay relationships lasting through that because gays have been conditioned to think that if the sex ain't good, we ain't compatible no more. Or it's time for us to move around because this whole relate, this whole community has been built off of the strength of sex. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, continuing on with the conversation, she said that about us. And then I was just like, yeah, that is true. I was like, I don't know. I ain't never experienced that before. You know what I'm saying? Except for with my new dude, we don't have to have sex all the fucking time. Like, so I do think that being okay with not having a such a sexual, strong, passionate relationship and knowing that there's a chance for it to get better, that's better than having a very strong sexual relationship and then it dies down. And then all of a sudden, y'all don't feel like y'all even need to be in each other's presence because the only thing that's been con that's been putting y'all together is sex. The only bond that y'all have created has been through sex. That's why I made that video that was in that was talking about how it's important to actually have a relationship and build a bond outside of sex with your partner because the sex will not always be that good. And once that's gone, if that's all y'all's connection is, then y'all not gonna last. And that's kind of embarrassing and it's childish. It's not a real relationship. Let's just be real, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And then, what else? So, yeah, we continue to talk. And I was like, well, so what is it that, I was like, what is it that y'all think, you know, what is it that y'all do that you think is different? She said, first of all, honestly, if it wasn't for this baby, I would have been left her ass certain times. But because of the baby, I'd be like, well, let me just not leave, and then we'll end up making up later, or we'll talk about it later, and then I don't even want to leave no more. So it's like, that was another thing that I peeped. I'm like, okay, so because a lot of gays do not get kids, and because we have a hard time having kids, yes, straight people stick together because of kids a lot of the times as well, and they may not be completely happy in that moment. But what they're not telling you, and what you're not witnessing that you witness when they're talking shit about they nigga, you're not witnessing how they get to a point where they like, oh shit, I do want to fuck with this nigga. Or they, they were mad in that moment and they were acting out of impulse. My point is that a lot of gay men do not have the ability to stop and think about anything else. All they can care about is they self and the only thing they're going to lose in this relationship if it don't work is this nigga. That is another reason why a lot of relationships don't work. That's another reason why I said in that, in another video, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm gonna put a screenshot to each video that I'm talking I'm referencing to right, right up here in this corner. And uh that's why I put that in that video was because it's not about getting trapped in a relationship that's not healthy. It's about not acting on impulse. When you have to think about it, when you have to stop and think, you may actually realize that you may not actually want to make that decision. But because you don't have nothing to really keep you, you know, to keep you committed, you don't give a fuck. Y'all, that's human people. Us as humans, we do have to be kind of forced to do shit if you think about it. Leases, they have conditions that you have to meet in order to stay in that lease. Contracts, they have conditions that you have to meet in order to stay in that contract. What do y'all think is different about a relationship? So y'all, gays have basically been conditioned to not have no kind of commitment to this shit for real so they can pack up and leave they whenever the fuck they want to that is one of the most to toxic and most unsatisfying things in this community because it means that really none of your relationships is real then if that's the case you know what i'm saying it's supposed to be more than just you're not happy at the moment to make a decision on a relationship that can change both of y'all's lives, you know what I'm saying? So, 
we talked about that. And then another thing I do realize that two things, I'm not, I'm going to say two things that I noticed that about lesbian relationships, especially theirs that I noticed that is different from gay relationships that I see works for them. But I don't know if it will work for a gay relationship or if it should work for any relationship. Uh, two things. The first thing was one day I hung out with these heifers, right? We go and riding around, we kicking everything is good. All of a sudden, these bitches start arguing over something simple as fuck. I don't even remember what it was about. These bitches start arguing about it. And they literally went all the way up to 10, y'all. I'm talking about talking nine yards of shit to each other. Bitch, fuck you. Y'all, you ain't shit, bitch, and all this other shit, right? All of a sudden, like, you know, I'm talking about they was going in. Like, bitch, I don't got to be with you. I could do this. I could do that. All this other shit, right? I'm talking about hitting on the low buttons. Why the fuck out of nowhere, like, five minutes later, these bitches went right back down to zero. Like, ain't shit happened. I was like, what the fuck? I'm sitting in the back seat, y'all. Like, I just knew, like, shit was getting ready to hit the fan. Me and my auntie getting ready to get dropped off at my crib. You know, this bitch getting ready to be talking to me about this bitch and what they been going through. Whoop de woo. Nah. These bitches went right back down to zero. So then I realized in that moment in that back seat, like, I had an epiphany, like, Nigga, this don't never happen in gay relationships. <laughs> I was like, nigga, I ain't never seen two niggas go all the way up to 10, go all the way to low blowing and talk about each other and his families and shit, talking nine yards of shit, and then these niggas just, you know, go down to zero like it wasn't nothing. I've never seen that in a gay relationship. That's where the testosterone and the pride and ego in men really is a problem because... Uh, the fact that them is two women, they have the ability to literally let go of whatever the fuck and move forward because they are emotional creatures. So that may work for them in certain favors and may go against them in certain favors as well. But this was one that I noticed went for them in a positive way because they let this shit go. I am so used to seeing, I see how the difference goes in gay relationships. Gay men have too much pride and ego. I ain't going to say just gay men, men and period. Pride and ego is a killer for us. We don't let go of shit. We hold animosity. Niggas might go down to a five to where they not arguing like that no more. If they go up to ten, they might go down to five to where they can be in each other's presence. You know, you over there, I'm over here. We may not even talk. We may have attitudes and all kinds of shit. Walk around the house, slamming the doors and all kinds of shit. I'm not saying that lesbians don't go through this at all, but I'm saying they have a... a better ability to let go of shit and move on the only thing that's bad about that is, is that they may not even address the shit and just act like because they not tripping off of it no more that they didn't resolve the issue and they ain't resolve shit they still two bitter bitches that just ain't talked about the shit you know what i'm saying and it's gonna reap his head in the future at some point anyway so it's not necessarily a good thing however i just noticed the differences there i was like gay men like, you you beat a nigga in an argument and he will hold that shit over your head. He will wait till you fuck up. He will try to create scenarios where you fuck up so that he can have something to throw back at you. Like, it's like this war with niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I'm very thankful for in my new relationship that I do not deal with. That was one of the main things I had to make sure I wasn't going to deal with. It was no pride and no ego shit. If we both cannot submit, if we both cannot apologize, if we both cannot be feminine at certain times, we don't need to be together because I'm not going to be the only emotionally mature motherfucker around. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, basically, I peeped that 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 was a huge difference that they had going on. So that would result to relationships lasting longer because there ain't no real pride in it. But then there's also a negative to that where they don't give a fuck about it, about each other's like they don't give a fuck about they self-esteem enough like they don't care about being treated correctly in my opinion because for my auntie another thing i noticed is that my auntie didn't allow this girl to cheat on her now she may she doesn't know if she's cheated on her physically but she knows that she's cheating on her emotionally by texting she didn't call her texting bitches and all kinds of shit right and so 
that's another thing that I don't see really going on. Me personally, I can I'm not like my auntie at all. If I catch a nigga texting somebody or if I catch you cheating, well, that's pretty much a wrap for the the relationship as passionate as it is. We may still talk, but I'm not getting ready to like like the whole relationship, like me falling in love and shit, that shit sits sit at a cease at that point. You know what I'm saying? For my auntie and for a lot of women, it don't matter what kind of income bracket they are. I've noticed this growing up, even in now, going through high school, in, in, uh, all the way up until now. Even with celebrities and even with regular women, these bitches allow motherfuckers to cheat on them and they stay with their ass. To the point where I even asked my grandma, I said, if you was to have a, I said, let me ask you this, grandma, 100. Do you think that if you have a zero tolerance for cheating, that that could end you up single by default? And she said, yeah, it could, straight up. Like, she was like, I ain't gonna lie to your grandson. Everybody done did some shit up under the sun. She wasn't saying that everybody done cheated in every relationship. But she was saying that it's a very high chance, especially dealing with men. She was like, if you're gonna be dealing with men, you gotta understand that they might actually cheat. But see, in this case, this is a different story. But however, I think that studs think that being a man, a part of being a man is cheating. Because I noticed when talking to her girlfriend her stud girlfriend it was like she was pertaining to cheating as being a man like i'm the masculine one i can do this or that and i was like just because you like you think that us as men we feel like we're supposed to be able to get away with cheating that is actually probably true in a subconscious way that's misogynistic shit and that could be true but however yeah uh basically with the ability to let go of shit act like it didn't happen don't have no pride on it and be able to move on from from arguments and conversations that were not healthy and not have no animosity or no grudge held behind it, that's going to make a relationship last a little longer. All right? And then two, allowing motherfuckers to cheat on you and talk to you crazy and shit and you stay or y'all fighting and y'all staying with each other. I know niggas do that too. You know what I'm saying? And I know niggas allow niggas to cheat on them too. But I'm not talking about you know, people who ain't really serious about relationships. I'm talking about people who've been for real loyal to self and you get cheated on. I'm not talking about you been doing dirt, he been doing dirt, y'all ain't no better than each other. Y'all deserve each other. I'm talking about you been loyal like a motherfucker and this nigga been cheating on your ass. Who the fuck is getting ready to put up with that shit besides a motherfucker who ain't got no self-worth? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just had to make this video real quick because I was just like, yeah, man, like what's... Why is it such a difference in lesbian relationships lasting so much longer or having the ability to last longer than gay relationships? And I had to just, you know, peep that those are a couple of reasons right there. Strong couple reasons. Also, like she said in the beginning of that conversation, they don't, it's not all about sex for them. They actually have more connection outside of that. They actually have friendship and shit involved. That's why I said it's important for gay men to make sure y'all have friendship involved in building y'all's bonds and y'all's relationships. I'm trying to tell you, we are not, like, you're going to get tapped out of this sex shit, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Even OnlyFans creators are miserable because they have to fuck when they don't want to just to get income, y'all. Trust me. You, you may think that this shit's cool now, but you're not going to want to do this forever. We're not cut out like that. This hookup shit, you know what I'm saying? What else do I want to say about that? Yeah, comment, y'all. Let me know what y'all think on the differences between lesbian relationships and gay relationships. And if y'all feel like they're the same or if they're different, uh, let me know what y'all think. I like this topic. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, cause Kelzo say so.